name is Amanda. And my name is Dara. And we're graduate students studying planetary science at Purdue University. Today we're going to talk about habitable zones and what they mean for finding life across the universe. But first we want to start with a very important question. What does life have in common with Goldilocks from Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Well, just like Goldilocks, different places in the solar system are too hot, too cold, and most importantly, some are just right for a habitable zone. A habitable zone is sometimes called a Goldilocks zone for that very reason. Generally, for a planet to even have the potential for hosting life, it has to be located within the habitable zone. Planets in a habitable zone are more likely to be at a temperature and have the right components for life as we know it. So, how do we find and measure a habitable zone? Habitable zones are calculated using the star's luminosity, or how bright it is, and the effect of temperature, hot, cold, or just right. Locating a habitable zone in a solar system is one way to assess which planets in a star system are potentially habitable. If you look at our solar system, Earth is located within the habitable zone, but Venus and Mars aren't that far outside of it. If we were space explorers from another solar system, trying to find life in our own solar system, we'd probably start with Earth, but we also wouldn't rule out Venus and Mars until we could go check them out for ourselves. Identifying a habitable zone is used as a helpful clue in a series of mysteries that we need to unravel when looking for life. Today, you're going to draw a solar system and calculate its habitable zone. The supplies you'll need are a piece of paper, a ruler, something to draw with, and a calculator. The calculator is optional. Before we get started, you'll need to decide what type of star is in the center of your solar system. Your options are Gliese 581, a red dwarf star, which means it is a small, cool temperature star. Kepler 62, an orange dwarf star, which means that it is a small, medium temperature star. Or HR 8799, a yellow dwarf star, which means it is a small, hot star. You don't need to worry about picking the medium temperature star in order to have a habitable zone in your solar system. You'll have one no matter which star you pick. Now that you've picked a star for your solar system, we're going to start by drawing our stars on the left side of the page. Use the scale on the table to know how big to draw your star. If you chose Gliese 581, your star should be 0.6 inches across. If you chose Kepler 62, your star should be 1.4 inches across. And if you chose HR 8799, your star should be 3 inches across. These values are based on the relative size compared to our sun. To calculate where the habitable zone is in your solar system, we need to start with the luminosity or brightness of your star relative to our own sun. These luminosity values are listed in the table shown here. Write down the number that corresponds to your star because you'll need it later. You can see that both the red and orange stars are not as bright as our sun, but the yellow star is almost five times brighter. What do you think that means for how close or far the habitable zones would be to the star in each of these solar systems? Pause the video now if you want to take some time to think about this question. It means that for our red and orange star solar systems, which are not as bright, the habitable zone will be closer to the star than in our yellow star, star solar system, which is very bright. We'll use these two equations shown here to calculate the inner and outer bounds of your habitable zones. Pause the video if you don't want to see the answers just yet, but you'll get your values in astronomical units. You may be wondering, what is an astronomical unit, or an AU? An astronomical unit is the distance of the Earth from the Sun, and it is equal to 92,955,807 miles. Since distances in our solar system are so large, scientists use astronomical units to make measuring things a little bit easier. So now, we'll draw our inner and outer bounds on your paper, but we have these in astronomical units, and we need to convert our numbers into inches to be able to draw them on our papers. To do that, you'll multiply the AU values by 3, and that will be how many inches from your star that you will draw your inner and outer habitable zones. So, mark the inner and outer bounds of your habitable zones on your page, similar to what we've done here. What do you notice? How big is your habitable zone? Take a minute to draw some planets in your habitable zone and what you think life might look like there. This is just for fun, so no wrong answers here. Now that you have your solar system and its habitable zones, take a look at your neighbors and compare them. 
you might notice that if you chose the largest and brightest star, HR 8799, that your habitable zone is biggest and furthest away. This is because a larger and brighter star has a farther reach than a smaller, cooler star. Isn't that cool? Now, in each solar system, we have an idea of where to look for planets that have the potential to host life as we know it. But we're still missing a lot of info. What's the planet made out of? Does it have an atmosphere? These are just a couple of other questions that we need to answer to help find life in the universe. If you want to learn more about how we search for exoplanets, check out the Exoplanet Barcode video. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Today we're going to talk a little bit about habitable mm. zones and what they mean for life across the universe. You want, want to start asking a very important question. Okay. okay. Can they see your shoes? Mm -hmm. Can they no. see our shoes? Okay, no, good, because I would have worn cuter shoes. That's the case. I, I, I thought your shoes were very cute. I mean, thank you. I appreciate it. Pose. 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 Science. Just <laughs> <laughs> like this thing. This thing. <laughs> How do you do this? <laughs> I don't understand. Thanks. <laughs> do things. Bye. Bye. You want to say bye? Thanks. See you next time. <laughs>